We're on the air. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. I hate to bust in the ones like this. <laughs> uh, but as boys, Silas Robertson seated right over there. Two things we never saw. Ever. You and if if there had been one, we would have spotted him. We never saw a deer track. Ever? Ever. No deer tracks. None. From 60 through 64, we're at the roaming age, see? Is this the day the the, you were dropped off in the Falcon and you had to get 10 miles back to your house? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is in Dixie. Dixie, Dixie Louisiana. Louisiana. Dixie, Louisiana. There's a town called Dixie. Well, in Dixie, we went in the woods. We stayed in the woods. Big pecan trees, you know, bottom land, hardwood. Not one deer track. That's one. Two is we never laid our eyes on a beaver or beaver track. There were no deer and there were no beavers. And this is, uh, what is it, 2021 since Jesus held up. 21, add the 21, that's about 50. About 50, well, more than that, you know, 55. Yeah, yeah right. 55 about. or 60 years ago yeah. in these United States of America. Si, think about it. There were no there were no beavers damming up streams and there were no deer at all. Well, you just look both those animals on what has happened in the last 50 years. They stocked them, they said, a pair of them here and a pair of them there. <laughs> and from that stock the beavers, they they started stocking yeah. them in the 60s and when I by the time I got to Louisiana Tech, about a year after I got there, I'm squirrel hunting, I looked down, I said, "Whoa." Deer track. I said, they got deer over here. But they had just stocked them, and, you know, and it took 50 years. And now, where we are, si, did are they there now, oh. beavers and deer? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can remember I grew up hunting a 10 saw swamp. Yep. Down there in Madison Parish, 10 lick hunting club beside Africa hunting club. And I can remember seeing pens. Well, they'd catch them deer, and they would take them to other places. But we had deer. I, I grew up seeing deer, but when we'd get here and get around, you know, I, I didn't see no deer when I was young running around in the woods around here. And I never saw any wild dreams much until I got in my 70s. You say dreams. So we went from deer, no beaver, no deer. Now we're going to dreams. Now, so I may correct me if I'm wrong. See, we've been running together for over 70 years. Well, the other night I got in a scrap. <laughs> and in my dream, a large monkey. <laughs> he came Monk. out of a big tree. And, and, and when I saw him coming toward me, I dove. And then because he was just right on me, I said, I got I to gotta fight back. So I jumped and grabbed the monkey and the monkey was started hollering and when i woke up i've got miss k <laughs> i've got my hands on miss k you know about right in here You're, ah! so i mistook okay, in my dream great. the monkey for miss k and she squalled out you know and she said what was all that about i said I thought you were a monkey. A monkey. A big one. A big come one. out of a tree well, on I me. I never would have thought you would say, I had a dream about a monkey. If somebody had told me I would dream about a monkey attacking me, I would get a lot of attacks in my dreams. Things are coming after me. Different kind of people are coming after me. You know, they're going to kill me. First one thing or another, I'm running. I'm on a cliff, you know, and they're fixing to go over the cliff. I dream like that all the time. But uh, I was surprised that it was a large, it was a monkey. A monkey. What you what you have for supper? I don't know, but, but, I, <laughs> but I need to change drink. recipes. I guarantee you that. <laughs> Good. Well, great. boys, we could pontificate on Jesus. Number one, since uh, since we follow him. Uh, by the way, now y'all are up here. What do you what do y'all call this particular room? What is this? This this is the duck call room. So this is. Uh, I don't get here that often. In fact, I haven't been here in a couple of years. <laughs> but it's good yeah. to have you. Yeah. I, I drove him by it from time to time. <laughs> yeah. But but the idea was 
I said, I'll fish the river, Miss Kay. Get me out of town. I'll fish the river. We'll survive. I'll sell the fish. Now, here's a guy, I have a couple of degrees from La Tech. But I said, you know, I said, get me to the woods. And I, she was sitting there looking at me, you know. And I said, I'll start fishing the river for a living. We'll sell the fish. I said, we're going to, it's going to be pretty hard times. I said, however, I said, I reached in my pocket. I said, you see this duck call? It's the only one like it. I said, it sounds just like a duck. I said, when the duck call takes off, I'll figure out how to get it on the market. I said, and when it takes off, I'll rack my nets, my fishing nets, and good times will have come our way. I said, it's like a ship way out there, but you can't see it. <laughs> you can't see yeah. it. I said, but it, it, it's, it's, it'll be a ship going toward the dock. Well, we started building duck calls, but we couldn't make the reeds fast enough. And I told Miss Kay, I said, you know what? I fixed the call old Cy up and see if he'll come over and build these reeds, these duck calls. We need a man, a reed builder. Because I said, we got all these reeds, but I said, there's both of them are flared up on the end. It's got a little dimple in them to keep it from sticking. And I said, the length of them, a little mold, you know. So I got on the phone. I called over. I said, Cy, what are you doing? He said, well, I served in the Army for 25 years. I'm over here now taking care of golf courses. I, I, I work on a golf course. I said, for a living? He said, yeah. That's what I do. A deadbeat boy. job. Boys. Yeah, mow the grass, you know, and he could get in. A, yeah. You do a little hunting from time to time on catching some frogs and blue wing teal lighting on the pond and the golf golf course. I said, <laughs> look, I got a, I got an idea. I said, I need somebody to build these duck call reeds. I said, because we're going to get this duck call on the market. It's doing pretty good. I said, we got a long way to go. I said, but there's only, and I need a reed man and you the man. I said, one stipulation, you have to duck hunt every day of the duck season. You have to duck hunt. And yeah, old Sal's on the phone. He said, I'll be over in a couple of days. Yeah, I oh. bet you he was a perfect attender. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> it was that quick. And I looked up two days later, and he had a U-Haul. He pulled in and said, all right, where's the reason? <laughs> what room I'm staying in? <laughs> so now, Sal, you look back. Sal, that was a good choice on your part. Yeah. Well, and your woman in, didn't even bad my idea yeah. about it, did she? Uh, no, no. Look, that's what's so amazing about this story. My wife comes home Friday afternoon, okay? This Friday afternoon, like 5 o'clock. She's working for the government. She's in a deadbeat job, too, okay? <clears throat> we're both miserable at what we're doing, okay? And she had said, since when I got married, I lived with you and Kay. We did for uh, three months before we, you know, bought her own place or rented a place. But anyway, she said, I'll never go back to Louisiana. Never. So she comes home Friday afternoon at that, 5 o'clock. That, that, uh, you were in Alabama at the time. When I oh, called. yeah. I, yeah. I've got a place in Alabama. So she comes in and says, uh, you know what you need to do? You know? And I said, what's that? She said, uh, you need to see if uh, Phil can pay you and you just, we go over there and you work for your brother. You know, so first thing I do is I get on the phone and I call Trace Lee and say, hey, uh, your mom's dying. <laughs> you know, and, and she says, uh, what are you talking about? I said, well, she just told me uh, that I need to go, uh, you know, if Phil can pay me, I need to go work for my brother. You know, and Trace said, yeah, you're probably right. She she must have, uh, doctor told us she's got cancer or something. We both thought she was sick to die. Yeah, she gone nuts. Uh, you know, so look, this is Friday afternoon, you know. So we kind of are still talking about Saturday, you know. That's when you call, you know, and say, hey, look, what you need to do, I need somebody to build these duck call reeds. And number one, building duck call reeds, that's the most boring, monotonous job there is. You sit there all day, and you got to bend them, okay, you got to put a rivet in them. By the way, so how many years did you do that? Because it was well, a long. 99 to whenever. You know, yeah, 10 or, 10 or 12 years. Yeah, because I retired, what, 93, when I come over here at 99. But anyway, yeah. Sunday rolls around. I go to church Sunday, and I tell the people there at church, I said, well, if I can sell this place, you know, I'm out of here. Yeah. So look, we go we go home. We're cooking dinner. You know, so I just sit down and start eating dinner, knock, knock on the door. 
A woman from church says, you ain't sold your place yet, have you? I said, no, I, we just talking about it. She said, I'll buy it. So Friday afternoon, okay, my wife tells me, hey, you need to go work for your brother. Saturday, you call and say, hey, you need to come over here and work for me. You ain't going to get paid much, but hey, you'll eat good, you know, we, we'll we live off the river. So Sal, what did I tell you about the ship? Yeah, and he said, hey, look, <laughs> I can see the top of the ship out on the ocean. And I That's said, what, what are you talking about? He said, oh, hey. It's the ship coming in, and when it comes so, in, hey, it's going to load. And we're so gonna I be, said, well, we're going to be after fine. about year five, so I said, how yeah. long does it take that ship to yeah. get here? I said, hey, I said, do, yeah. you, I still, said, it's I said, do you still see the ship? And he said, oh, yeah, I got where I can see yeah. it. Exactly. I, before, I was just seeing the mass of it. He said, I can actually see the ship now. And the smoke coming out yeah. of the stack. Well, hey, so look, I said, when's it going to unload? I said, it won't be long right. now. Like he said, it won't be long. Well, hey, the fan. Hey, and he showed up, and hey. Is that the docks and it's unloading? <laughs> I'm more interested in hearing about this childhood that y'all grew up in, but we haven't even intro the show or taken a break. <laughs> and this episode's right. gonna if you haven't well, figured what it you out. Just heard was what the is cold this dude we're doing now? Y'all got some open. kind of show going on. Yeah, yet? this is a yeah. show. It's oh, called the right? Duck Call yeah. Room. We have a special guest. We're gonna break all that in yeah. after our first okay. break. There you go. This is gonna be hey, the best episode we'll be ever. Right back. I'm not even going to talk all day today. I'm going to let these two do it all. Oh. We'll be right back after this break. Si? Yeah. You spend a lot of time caring what you look like? No, I really don't. You don't, you don't look, care what you look looks like? Looks are only skin deep. Hey, ones. well, you know what? Some people try and look good. Some people are concerned with their looks. Like Martin, he's trying really hard. Well, hey, but he's looks, not here today. But looks here, are what it is, boys. Hey, it is what it is. Hey, and if you're worried about what you look like on top of your head, maybe you got some male pattern baldness or receding hairline, there's a product for you out there. If you're worried about your receding hairline, male pattern baldness, it's called Keeps. Keeps.com. You need to go there. Not everybody can be a Cy Robertson and just be naturally beautiful in in spirit and in looks the way he is. So we got good news. Keeps can help. It offers the same doctor-recommended, FDA-approved hair loss treatments, but you only got to pay half that. It's a great deal. You'll love about Keeps. It's all online. You don't have to go to the doctor. You don't... Look, go online, answer a few easy questions, snap a few pics of your head and your hair, and a licensed doctor is going to review your info and recommend the right hair loss treatments for you. Then it shows up to your house. It's 2021. Nobody likes leaving their house anymore. This comes to you. So don't make trips to the doctor, the drugstore. Just go online. Get started. We got a special discount for them. Go to K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Robertson for 50% off that first order. That's Keeps dot com slash Robertson. Keeps dot com slash Robertson. Just look good with all that beautiful hair. And gonna- say 50%. I so, Sai, si, looking back on it, was it worth it? Oh, yeah. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. From our childhood going back, okay, our father raised a huge garden, okay. My mother, okay, and my sister, they put up everything we raised in the garden, they canned, okay, and mason jars and mason jar, you know, quartz and pints. You know, did you ever think you would be where you're at right now, looking so- at how we grew up? So, Sai, here's the deal. If you remember, we were poor, I guess, in the eyes of the world, but I never heard anybody say we were poor. We didn't know it. I, I never heard anybody get up in the morning and say, boy, we are <laughs> yeah, we are up against it here. We, hey, we didn't know it. <laughs> no air conditioning, no yeah. television, no, no heat. I mean, one fireplace in the end of a log cabin, you say you put a bunch of big log on it, before you went to bed. But no, you say, well, what about a bathtub? No bathtub. Number no. three wash tub. You bathed in a number three wash tub. Right. Wow. And I was yeah. about number three on the list or yeah. four. So By the time he got to me, it was cold and dirty. Y'all yeah. all okay. used the same water. Same, same water. water. Okay. And if you're so the last one. So you're number one, three or four, you're yeah. pretty warm. You know, yeah. not 98, but it's on up there pretty warm. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know what the women did, Si, Judy and Jim. They didn't They didn't bathe in the tub, I don't guess. I didn't I, see it. I, I don't know. <laughs> so the older you were, that was the seniority? Yep. Oldest went yep. first yep. down to Pecking the order. Pecking order. <laughs> Number three wash tub. We'd sit it out there, you know, like in the cooler months and let it sit there in the sun for, you know, an hour before you jump over in it. But uh, Warming it up. Dad, yeah. Dad's soap. But, 
But That's then they went from there right out of a way. Then we, we moved up because I, at some point there was a pipe just coming out the back of the house. They they had put a pump on the well instead of dropping it down with a rope. Yeah. You know, they put a pump on the thing. So we had like running water, but it was just coming. It was just a pipe going out of the log cabin. And you get up under that, you know, and, and do the best you could with it. It's cold. But I bet. Si, si ran naked until he was... <laughs> He was about six. <laughs> well, when it got time to go to first grade, hey, first so grade boy, had to put clothes well, on. Hey, yeah, first you, grade. Going when they went to school and, like today, first thing you got to do is put the clothes on. That's said, I ain't going. So I said, I ain't wearing no clothes. I said, I ain't Mom going. said, Oh, you going to wear clothes? <laughs> I ain't you? going. <laughs> you know, we was uh, Phil. Phil says we're 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 gatherers, gatherers, hunter hunter gatherers, hunters, yeah. Yeah. hunters gatherers. and gatherers. I'm pretty much just a gatherer. Yeah, because look, you used to be <laughs> able to find. All kinds of uh, wild plums, wild grapes, all the, the slows, slows, dewberries, blackberries, blackberries, mayhaws. dewberries. You could actually go out and pick Boy. yourself a basket full. And of them. some of our neighbors, old women, they had things like peach trees growing in their yard, and we had farmers who planted watermelons. So we were kind of like coons. We weren't. We 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 we'd dart out in there, get get us two or three peaches a piece, go back in the brush and eat the peaches, and you know check around see if anybody there. We'd go back out there get a couple more. So we didn't take more than we could eat, but we we had peaches, fresh peaches every year. But we we didn't. We we were stealing peaches basically. But I thought in the grand scheme of things, right. like pecans, orchards, you know, yep. people out, yep. we'd hit, we get on, come out of the brush. Pick us up a rack of pecans, you know, a bag of pecans. Get that, and then watermelons. Bag. You know, there were big melons. Hundred pound bag. Remember, Si would wait till uh, the beyondos would would harvest their watermelons. Would come up in them tall grass and look out there where they'd leave some. You know, some of them they wouldn't pick up. wasn't big enough yet. So we'd look to the right and the left. I said, let's go for it. So we go get a watermelon, <laughs> run back in the brush, and you could drop that watermelon, big old yellow meated watermelon. Some of them, you have the heart of it. It'd we just sit there and eat the heart It'd in the brush. Open. We'd go get us another one, about a couple of melons. You, you're good to go. Dumb. Her mother <laughs> sold Avon. Okay, and we didn't know it at the time. We had permission to hunt all the people's land, but they had told my mama, no, don't, don't tell them that they got permission. Because we enjoy chasing them too much. Because we, <laughs> hey, no, no, because we'd hear the pickups come in and, hey, wide open through the woods. We'd go run, jump behind a log, be laying down, hid in grass or brush, whatever. The farmers all chased us, okay, and we had permission to do it. We didn't know it. Mom By the way, dad, sir, they, they called. I got a <laughs> phone call about seven or eight years ago. And, yeah. And this guy said, he said, Phil, he said, you remember Mickey McDade? I said, yeah. I said, what school is going to be? He said, that's me. I said, well, well you know, well, all, he said, we've, we've been sitting around here at the cafe talking about you and Cy and Tommy and all the old Robertson boys. And he said, and our daddies would come in and say, and I tell you what, that Robertson bunch, they like a bunch of deer. Now they see you coming <laughs> and they take off, they can jump Bob wire finches and never even look back. <laughs> So we're running from their dads or chasing them, but they're having a big time doing it. Yeah. Because, of course, we're getting pecans, peaches, anything that grew, we considered fair game. Squirrels, got to take yeah. them. We got to gotta get them. So he said, we've come up to a con con conclusion about those days because now we own all the land. He said, we miss y'all. <laughs> they ain't had no fun. Well, they That's looked why. and they saw me inside you know, on TV. You know, about hey, <laughs> they saw it. They're like, "Is that that bunch we were That's running right. around?" We tried <laughs> to catch that bunch, and they never could get them. Good. I remember one time they was. I don't know if you remember. We was up there by the dump, and they was. Uh, we heard a shot, and we went over, there and it was. It, it was two young guys. I don't know who they were, but they shouldn't have been there. And they had shot a deer. And you told them, you knew them. Or knew, I might have been some of them boys, you know, north of there. Yep. And uh, he said, you need to get off of here. He said, get what you can get. Just don't let me catch you. <laughs> that was because of that, wasn't it? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got him a little deer meat there. Let it, let it, let it ride. Yeah. That was because of that. Yeah. Yeah, we were poachers, but, you know, I look back on it. I don't know, Sal. They said they missed us, so they kind of enjoyed it, I think. Well, we never around. did mess with any of their, like, they boats, motors, Equipment, all that stuff. Like the tools, yeah. no. Anything, we, anything like a, if they had a shed where they had tools on, we never messed with anything like that. The only thing, that anything yeah. growing, pecans, peaches, plums, all that, that was fair game. That fair game. Yeah. yeah. The Almighty put that there. Yeah. Just so, don't mess but with hey, equipment. we never did because you know, one time I remember a deputy chef coming to the house and he had a old beat up raggedy looking some kind of hat. And he said, uh, we found this over at Mr. Grimes' uh, boathouse and uh, y'all stole three motors. And that's the only time I ever seen my, my dad really mad because he, he told that sheriff, he said, hey, don't you ever come back and knock on my door again unless you got one of them handcuffed to you and you see them do it. He said, because, hey, they'll hunt on, on the land. Shoot he didn't, even, he didn't even sit us down and said, y'all do that. No, he no. knew we didn't. Yeah. He knew we yeah. knew we wouldn't have done that. Yeah, and come find out, it was it was old man Grimes' kids and his friends. They died. You know, they was in high school. They stole three motors, got scared, and they threw them off 12-mile bow bridge just threw them in the water because they got scared their own people yeah then they were trying to pin the charge yeah, they on gonna pin it on us oh yeah yeah because they knew we hunted on their land yeah everybody knew that well look we're pumped to have wild willies uh beard products as a partner of the show but look don't take my word for it the name wild willies you know who we got to talk about it we got the boss we got wild willie himself uh yeah, you know, this beard straightener is really cool. Uh, I've been working with uh, Cy to try to really help his beard out. Um, it's kind of sad. So uh, <laughs> I was hoping something like this would help. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of guys who are into, you know, making their beards look nice. And it is nice. You know, it's nice. You grow it out. Your wife may not be sure about this beard. The best thing you can do is take care of it. Uh, that's why Wild Willie's beard straightener. Has been amazing, and I actually got it for my son-in-laws. Uh, I have a new son-in-law. Got him this as a gift. He doesn't have a beard, so I'm trying to encourage him. You know, when he does, that he has something because you know the younger guys they want to just drop a little subtle hint, a little primp it out. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, we need the, you know we need this, and so yeah, we most of us comb our hair and uh, put something in it. Uh, so. Hey. You might as well take care of. I mean, it's basically the underside of your, Look, your and, head, and with a nickname like butt cut. I mean, the boy obviously needs a little hair straightening advice. So this, this is a great deal. Look, the Wild Willie's Beard Straightener is a two-in-one beard brush that uses ionic heat to style your beard to perfection. It has multiple heat settings up to 400 degrees. It's easy to use, and you can shape your beard in seconds for a professionally styled and sexier-looking beard. And it actually kills all the bugs that are in your beard. <laughs> so that's not on my list, but if you're saying well, that hey, the I'm case, just I like that, it. That's an extra one, Look, boy. The Wild Willie's Beard Straightener works for all beard styles and even works on the hair on your head. So if you're like Si, you got a little ponytail coming out the oh, back, yeah. you can straighten yeah. that thing, too. A little skillet. The, <laughs> <laughs> the compact size is great for home or travel use. And in case you accidentally leave it on, safety first. It automatically turns itself hey, off. Boy. You don't have to worry about hey. burning your house down. Right. Look, for a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off your Wild Willie's Beard Straightener at checkout. Just go to styleyourbeard.com. There's no promo code needed. That's styleyourbeard.com for 25% off at checkout. Style your beard. Right, with Wild Willie's Beard Dot Styler. Dot com. Dot com, boy. Right, right, 25%. Com. That's a good deal. Hey. Well, when was the first time that you uh, said, I think I need to make a duck call? What, what well, brought that on? Now, 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 that, now, that raises an interesting question because, you know, there was I'm three. formally educated, but I thought, what am I going to do with my life now? All I want to do is stay in the woods anyway. But so I finally just came up with an idea. I had one duck commander duck call, and uh, I brought these just in case this topic came up. <laughs> but, uh, he I had no idea <laughs> he that, that had. he had those hidden in his shirt. <laughs> you know, so so here's an interesting, to me it is at least, 
there's all kind of people running around on planet Earth with particular skill sets. The world's made up of a lot of different individuals. And I have concluded that everybody, every last one of them, although some will beg to differ, everybody has a skill set of some sort. In our case, it's, it's like playing piano by ear. You, you hear these various birds, and I took these, this hangs on the rack when, when duck season's over. So the goal wasn't exactly just to build a duck call and market it. The goal was it's broader than that because you hear birds fly by. Most people do not think, you know, I need to build a device that sounds like that bird. Well, I can bring him to me. So I can bring him to, he'll think I am one. Yeah. And the other thing <clears throat> is you say, so one, one bird flies by, this bird flies by, he doesn't have to fly by and me to hear him to know what he sounds like because I've been listening to him my entire life. I'm in my 70s. I've heard wood ducks all my life. No one on planet Earth, not one, had ever said, why don't I just build a device that sounds like not only a mallard, I want to sound like a widgeon. I want to know what a pintail sounds like, what a hen sounds like, a pintail hen. I mean, a, a, a teal hen and a teal drake and a woody and a gadwall and a mallard. You said most people, you know, say, how does a widgeon sound? So this is a compilation, if you want to call it that, of years of research. We know what they sound like because they stay in the woods all the time. A woody's flying. He only does that when he's flying. When he's flying. Mm -hmm. If he's sitting, he'll go. It sounds just like one of them. <laughs> That's incredible. So, so look, so you take one. Well, you got one duck under your belt. Of course, you had the mallard hen. Instead of that, you, you got to teach people how to use them. They go, you say, no. You got to come from your lung and get your, get your tongue planted on the roof of your mouth. And he so there's a, there's a mallard and there's a wood duck, two species. He left but, out one important thing. But okay. there's far more. We, we done told you we stay in the woods all the time. We pursue these flying birds vigorously. Relentlessly. When yeah. When yeah. it's open, when it's legal to kill them, we're after them. They're there. Okay. And we're after them. So look, so through the process, now, now we're in... 2020s, you say the the idea was way back there, far deeper than most people think. Now here's a little thing. I built that. I came up with it in less than an hour, with a bandsaw and super glue. And I wanted to see if I could build a one duck call that sounded like multiple ducks, different kinds. So here's a little thing. It's an ugly little thing. One of the most copied things in America. I never held it against anybody who copied it. You know, you know, you know. Duplication is, you know, what's the some duplication is something about form of flattery. That form yeah, of flattery. Yeah. So look, here's a teal. This is a Drake. I see him. That's all he does. And look, that little hen that's with him. I got a teal hen and I got a teal, teal drake and it's on hanging on one lanyard. Well, watch. Widgeon. I've got the same thing with the teal. That's a teal. A widgeon goes. That's a perfect widgeon. Mm -hmm. So I got two ducks out of one device. Bingo. But not through yet. Then I figured out that little, this right here. If you put your finger 
and stop the air up, the tone goes from <whistles> to <whistles> drops down. So I have a, everybody has a little piece of meat. It should be there. You can check it. Open your mouth real wide. There's a little piece of meat coming down off the roof of your throat. You ever seen that thing hanging there? Mm -hmm. The reason God gave you that, Mr. Husky, is that <laughs> so that you could sound like a pintail. Because if you can't flutter your uvula, it sounds nasty, but it's not. Uvula. <laughs> hanging down. So I'm going, <laughs> but my finger's in the end of it. So instead of, I got, now I've got, it flutters. Pintail. Yep, and it's pintail. Without that little piece of meat, it would be. No pintail. <laughs> some kind of computer. That's right. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Or, or a, a backhoe backing up. Backhoe. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Get out of the way. Get out of the way. I'm backing up. You could use it for that for a flagman, you know. Yep. But, well, listen to that. <laughs> Widgeon. <laughs> Teal. <laughs> out of one little device, let me be blunt. That's hard to do. I, it is. Very it hard. Is. So look, all these years later, people have said, hey, yeah, how'd you get it? You, you ask about, you know, did, it was broader than, I'm just going to build a duck call. We wanted to get them all. Look here. Here is a gadwall. We call them gray ducks in the country. Gray ducks. That's him. So we got Gadwall. Jay's come up with that, and he had a whistle, like this whistle. We took the whistle, glued it in the end of a quacking call, <laughs> so you got a quack and a whistle, and when both of them are done together, it comes out. Gadwall. Which you'd think impossible. So that's the Gadwall. So now we got all these different species, and we're sounding like them. Here's an old Mallard Drake. If you're a tenor, you, you can't use it. If you got a real high voice like this, I tell you what, boys. I'm out. High voice. I'm out. You're out. <laughs> but the guy who can say, well, what I'm trying old to Burley. say. Old Burley. Old Burley Daniel. So I, Mallard Drake. So and that's about so that our listeners will know. You say, so what's your point? It took 40 years to do all that. 40 years. And here's the reason and why. And now we're in a little room, and you say, you look around, and I'm looking at me over there, yep. picture, and I look like I was about 15. I'm actually <laughs> <laughs> the scariest 15-year-old I've ever seen. My <laughs> hair is black. My whiskers are black, and it looks like I dyed my hair, my hair black, yeah. but you like it one time. So I, all I'll have to say to the audience is, uh, life has not been kind as far as the way I look. So there's old dog. What was that old dog there, Si? Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. yeah. There's Vegas, old Vegas. She was a fair retriever. That but, was the one that you shot. You leaned over me to do it, and ever since you did it, that dog, every time it got near me, if I got too near, she'd bite me because she thought I shot her. Yeah. yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what you just heard was more than 35 years of research and development working for you. Well, no, it no. It was 40 years of research and development working for you. Here's how this 70. came about. Okay. Hold on. We got to take a break. I, take I a hate break. to be the all boring right. guy. All, right. I'm, uh, all, all right. I am today is a stop. I'll right. tell you how this come about after we come back from break. After a break. Hey, Si. What? You know what kind of dad I am? No, I'm a big softy, and you're you know what you dad you are you're probably a dad that loves naps right? Yeah. Well, you know what? No matter who your dad's like, you can get them a gift they can feel really comfortable in, and you know what that is? Uh, what is? Tommy John's. So from ball catching dads to ball scratching dads, all dads agree when they're wearing Tommy John underwear, they're much more comfortable, and they can do everything better. That's why Tommy John's doesn't have customers; they have fanatics. That's why they catch their balls so well. Hundreds of thousands of them who, after 13 years and tens of thousands of five-star reviews, call Tommy John the most comfortable underwear they've ever worn. Because with dozens of comfort innovations, once a dad tries Tommy John underwear, he ain't never going back. Like breathable, lightweight, moisture-wicking fabric with four times the stretch of competing brands, you know what I need? 
stretchy pants for my stretchy underwear. With over 14 million pairs sold, dads across America love Tommy John underwear, and there's no risk because he's always covered with Tommy John's best pair you'll ever wear, or it's free, guarantee. I just wish Martin was here so he could have said guaranteed. So right now, listen to me. Go to tommyjohn.com slash duck for 20% off your first order. That's right now. Order by June 15th for delivery by Father's Day. Hey, that's today. Get 20% off your first order at tommyjohn.com slash duck. tommyjohn.com slash duck. See site for details and give your dad's balls the gift they didn't even know they needed. There was three duck call manufacturers. I know P.S. Oates was one. Who was the other two? Remember one of them was the Cajun. Yeah, Jensen. Falk. Yeah, Jensen. Jensen and Cajun. And Falk. 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 Yeah. Okay, that was the three. Man, and, I didn't say anything about all that because I, you know. Well, I was just going to say that's had to come back because you said, you know, uh, it, it, it's pretty good, but it, it's not really right there. So you said, hey, I'm going to make one that sounds just exactly like what a duck sounds like. And oh, that, I remember him blowing around. He had some little doll, uh, child's toy with all that when he come up with that the three and one. Yeah, the pentail. Was, yeah. Uh, yeah. But when you, uh, you was blowing them other calls, and you was having to manipulate them. Work on them all the time. Oh, yeah. We yeah. was working on them all the time. To make them sound. Yep. We just I started wanted... with an oak, and I remember we'd have to take it to some Oh, yeah, guy yeah, you had to do a lot to cut it. it. Cut it down. We tried to make it easier for, for the guys and gals. There's some women duck callers, you know, out there, more and more of them all the time, which uh, that's a positive thing. I don't know where we rank now. I, I've never, you know, I don't know where we rank as far as sales and all that, but I would think probably – we're we're up or near the top. Yeah. Oh. We're, yeah. we're we're definitely we're top ten. We done built. I would think. <laughs> Man, stones. So probably. y'all are the brains. Y'all are the y'all are the power workers underneath. You know the idea. That's way back. Yeah. But now I, I tell you what, I'll give old Stone credit to put as many duck calls as he does together. And at the time he has. It is amazing how many duck calls that dude can turn out. I knew it was a good call. By the way, his story is Jace brought him on board on a duck hunt, and I watched him, and I was vetting him in my mind. I watched him. <laughs> I listened to his verbiage as if then there was any foul language and whatever, and I was watching this dude. Well, he joined up, you know, took off to Afghanistan. They yeah. sent him over there. So he served his country. Well, he came back. So Jay starts to take him duck hunting. Well, after about studying him for a duck season or two, I said, Stone, I've come up to a con- with a conclusion, son. I said, I have officially vetted you. And he said, vetted me for what? I said, to marry my granddaughter. <laughs> and he said he said you're talking about nan i said yeah i said al's al's girl i said my little granddaughter and he said well she's not but 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 17 i think i said that's what i'm trying to tell you don't wait till she's 20 <laughs> move, i said move that's on, way huh? too old i said move now son yeah. i said now look now i vetted you and told you you can marry my granddaughter because you're a man of good standing you served your country you're a godly man I said, I've officially t- turned you loose on my family members, starting with Nan. And I said, however, I've said go, but you need to go talk to Al, her dad, who is my son, because yeah. he has the final say, not me. But it'll help you if you tell him <laughs> I said it you was good. Good to yeah. go. <laughs> it will help. I said, that'll help you when he's yeah. – so he goes over and tells Al. He said, look, your daddy told me that I can date Nan, but I had to check with you. But he's vetted me and said I was I was good to date her. He said you got past him, and he said he said yeah. He said I can I can go. He said if you got past him, he said wait till she to gets go. to be eighteen, then make you move. Well, he's the one. Nan works here today, yeah, and so does Stone. <laughs> but it all started romance in the duck blind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, That's amazing. Crazy. That's how Stone yeah, he lived got on with me board. a while when he come back from Afghanistan. He lived or with right, you? Yeah. I have about. a question. How did this guy come about? How did cause you hired Godwin, correct? He he was he was a 
he was a wayward man given to drunkenness and foul language, mm -hmm. and somebody <laughs> ran up on him. I don't know whether Al converted him or I converted him. I don't forget. Well, Tony told me, well, it was weird because me and Tony rodeoed, you know, together, and he'd moved off and uh, built all them condos in New York. <laughs> And paid off everything. That's what he went up there for. Well, he come back, and I ain't seen him in probably two years. And he called me and invited me to go to church. Well, I busted out laughing. I thought he was joking because I knew what he was doing because I was doing it with him. <laughs> <laughs> so I was but he was serious. He kept, he kept calling, and uh, that was pretty cool because he didn't care what I thought about him you know how some people oh i don't want to tell people but he loved me enough that he wanted to share it. he wanted no. me to know the hope that he had no. so at that time we just got johanna adopted her because what year was that by when were you converted 1996 january the first at one o'clock in 96 96 that's a way to ring in the new year yep well and so y'all knew each other because you were working at the I'm, mill. No, oh, yeah. I'm, yeah I'm, the first time I met you at some kind of duck calling contest. At a duck calling contest. We we didn't. That's when uh, they the feds bought Tensaw down there, bought all that land, hardwood bottom up, uh -huh. and bought our hunting club. So we didn't. We was kind of in between finding somewhere to hunt. Well, this guy in the neighborhood invited us on a duck hunt. I, we'd never duck hunted. And uh, we went, and man, it got me. When he talked to them, and them suckers talked back, the hair on the back of my neck would just stand oh, up. Yeah. By the uh, way, we got a call yesterday uh, from the Spaniard. Oh, yeah, he Spaniard. come in. Yeah, yeah, the Spaniard. And I said, I said, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm test flying. He said, I'll be flying one of the, the second largest transport jets in huh. the Air Force. Oh, okay. The Spaniard is it's about this close. Pilot. To, yeah, he, he's running. Yeah. yeah, and he flew over. He said, "We come over," and I said, "Hi, hi. Where are you flying when you came from over in Mississippi somewhere to come?" To, they, he yeah. told him, "So let's go to West Monroe." And they said, "Why?" He said, "Well, I'm from there." And they said, "You know them Robinsons over?" He said, "Oh yeah, I know." He said, "But I, you know," he said, "I didn't want to get them all stirred up." Yeah. But he comes to here the other day. Yeah. But he flew over. He said. About twenty thousand feet took about twenty minutes, twenty five minutes. He just, <laughs> That's something he's man. flying one of the largest jets yeah, yeah. in the Air Force. Yeah. I said, I said, how in the world did you figure all these? And looking at the the what you call them, all your computer screens. Uh, he said, oh, you get used to it. He said, but he's like number one in his class. The yeah. Spaniard is an Air and Force would, pilot, and you know? us knowing him, how he, how he was acting back then, and we like. You wouldn't have Would thought. you let him fly you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but now, I guess. Hey. Maybe. Hey, come on. He's official. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So what year did you start working at Duck Commander? You were converted in 96 by this yeah, gang. Yeah. And then did you just go straight into the duck call room? No. I, uh, I got to be friends with, you know, I worked at the paper mill for 21 years. I've been working there as long as I've been working here. It's pretty good. Pretty neat. You so what retire, actually do you do right? up here? I build up call. <laughs> so you put them together. You happen stone. Yep. Well, I was, well, you answered that question. How did y'all? Because y'all turn out a lot of duck calls. It's well, well just, it's uh, just there's not many of you. As in your words, it stay the course. Well, hey, stone, <laughs> stone automated. Well, who's y'all's reed man? Si so retired from the reed. Who's Jackie Hill. Jackie, Jackie Hill. So yep. Jackie is the yep. reed man, and yep. Yep. they claim he's a reed man of all reed men. Yeah, he's good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is he better than Zai? No. <laughs> no. He makes more no. reads. No, 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 no. He makes more because yeah. Stone automated everything. But back to what I was going to tell you so a while ago when we took a break. You're thousands of duck calls, right? Oh, yeah. Tens of thousands, hundreds of yeah. thousands. We done built since February 80. 80,000. 80, yeah. Well, good night. Yeah. Since February? Yeah. I but should know hear that. how this came about, okay, when he come with that idea. At the time, there was three duck call manufacturers, P.S. Oates, Jensen, and Falk. <clears throat> okay, and I, you actually met with uh, Jensen, I think, didn't you? Yeah, I met him all. To, <clears throat> well, yeah, but you actually was, you you had the double read system, and he tried to sell it to Jensen. 
And yep. Jensen, Jensen turned it down. Yep. And he the only thing Phil's ever said about his duck call, my duck call sounds exactly like a mallard hen. That's true. And he's got a good story about that, and I'll get him to tell it in a minute. But that's how it came about. He hmm. ever The only thing he's ever said about, okay, look, I'm building a duck call that does one thing. It will make you sound like if you learn how to blow it, it'll make you sound just like a mallard hen on the water. And, and that's a, what and you a want. A mallard duck will think you are one yeah. and come over and you put him in the pot. Yeah. yeah. Now, here, here's the story, okay? A FBI guy called Phil one day and told him, I run, I run the lie detector machine. Okay, and he said, and since I'm an avid hunter, he said, I went and I uh, recorded live ducks, you know, calling, and then, you know, I, I, I made a test. I run that through the machine that is a lie detector, and I run you on a duck call through the machine. The machine said you are a duck. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, he called me and told me that. <laughs> That's pretty cool. They, he, no, he said the, the reason they had them, what that machine did, when they wire people on undercover stuff, mm -hmm. and they would he, they he had a, they had a mic they wired them. Well, so when the crooks are talking, you know, this and that and the other, well, they got them on tape. Well, what was happening was the reason they built this machine is is people would say that ain't me, that's not me on that tape. That, yeah. I didn't. I never did that. And they said, "Well, you know, it sounds like him." But they said, "How can you prove it?" Well, they had to have some proof. So when they run you through the machine, if the machine says you said it, yeah, you said it. You said it. Well, yeah. he took that, blew into it with a duck call, and had and taped some wild ducks, put 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 them on it, and they put them together. And he said it was a match. So your duck call, according to the machine, <laughs> was, was a, duck. a duck. Was a duck. It really wasn't a duck. It was just a man who knew what he was doing. <laughs> yeah. But that's pretty pretty good. I said, I'm going to use that information. You care if I use that? He said, oh, well, I don't, I don't mind. That's marketing 101 right there. Yeah. Right. We're endorsed by the FBI. Yeah, that's, right. that's it. Voice analyzer. <laughs> I love it. Well, let's yeah. take one more. Or no, we, I think we got I'm I'm getting lost in all the stories. I do. <laughs> let's take a break. I'll find out how many more we got. And, and we'll be back. right back. Hey, Sa. Si, yeah. Do you know what one of the classes they made me take in college was? Oh, it ain't no telling. It was insurance 301 or something. And you know what? I don't understand at all. I don't know. Insurance. It's tough. Yeah. Do you understand insurance? No. Do you know how to get the best prices on insurance? No. I have no idea how to either. You want to know what I do? What do you do? Policy genius. Oh. So, hey, look, between Father's Day, Flag Day, and National Yo-Yo Day. So, thankfully, Policy Genius makes it, it easy to cross life insurance off that list. So, you can get back to yo-yoing. Are people yo-yoing all month long? Look. Insurance is tough. Policy Genius makes it easy to compare quotes of over a dozen top insurers all in one place. Look, why you want to compare? Why not just trust whoever you see on a billboard? Look, here's why you compare. You can save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius, and that means you can save $1,300 or more per year on life insurance by using Policy Genius to compare policies. The licensed experts over at Policy Genius work for you, not the insurance companies. So you can trust them to help you navigate every step of the shopping and buying process. That kind of service has earned Policy Genius an excellent rating on Trust Pilot. I trust them because Trust Pilot trusts them. All right, so getting started is easy. First, head over to policygenius.com slash life. And in just a few minutes, you can work out how much life insurance coverage you need and compare personalized quotes to find your best price. They never sell your information to other companies. They don't add any extra hidden fees. So here's what you need to do. Head over to policygenius.com slash life to get started right now. Policy Genius, when it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. All right, we're back from, I think that's going to be our last break. I don't know. We're doing the show a little different today. We have unashamed star Phil Robertson. Phil, I didn't know y'all did four, y'all do four days a week on unashamed. Yeah, that's why you don't see me much around here because <laughs> my plate 
is is full enough. Yeah, I bet that 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 is a lot of work there. But obviously, you can catch unashamed same place as you catch us. Uh, and it is every day that we're not on, they're on, and they. What do y'all do? Y'all on unashamed? Y'all pontificate about Jesus way more. We we do yeah. talk about Jesus. We just talk about silly things like Eagle the Pigeon as well. Yeah, he's pretty well the centerpiece of our podcast. I like that. Um, yep. So, Phil, we do emails here on this podcast. We have our fans email us in. Yep. And we had an email a few weeks ago. And I, Do you remember the guy that emailed in about the Jonah and the whale? Yeah, he wants yeah. to know what kind of fish. And so do you have an opinion on what kind of fish? What are you talking about now? Jonah and the whale. He he's yeah. or, or Jonah oh, and the fish. What kind of fish? Yeah, oh, they wanted it, to know it's, what. Real, it's real simple. A big one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. That's what I look, told him. I said, I somebody says, survive, yeah. look, if you're going to, you know, by faith, we believe the universe was formed at God's command, so that yeah. what is seen was not made out of what's visible. If you control the atomic structure of everything. What holds this woods together, the concrete, you look up, you look in the oceans and all that. Look, the Almighty could make a fish that could swallow Monroe, Louisiana. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah. You, 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 there's no yeah. varmint, no thing. You look out there in the ocean, somebody, uh, Dan showed me yesterday, big old, one of them big whales came up, you know. Unbelievable, the size of that thing. Yeah. He was oh. bigger than the boat. Oh. Yeah. And look, mm -hmm. yeah. at one time all the dinosaurs and all that, God just showing you some of the things he's made. If you want to build a big enough fish to swallow a man, it would be as comfortable as being in this living room sitting down there, you know, and you're in the fish's belly. Yeah. I mean, it's no problem. No problem. Yeah. Well, so that got us. We That got me inside. Were you on that episode? Mm -hmm. Well, we got all pontificating. I just love that word. What is the question you want to ask when you get to heaven? Yeah. So we have people emailing that in right now. I wouldn't be asking questions. I would just be thinking, I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> <the Lord." laughs> yeah. I ain't worried about how because I've already got that figured out. I didn't yeah, like, yeah, you know how, why you yeah. ended up there. So yeah. it makes you uh, watch what your lips say and watch how you roll. You say, hmm. Your mode of operation. Love. It did. I see love, joy, yeah. peace, yeah, patience, fruits of the spirit. kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Did I see that coming out of that individual? That's what that that's the way they were. Man, woman, you, it doesn't make any difference. You say, you're either a slave to sin or a slave to righteousness. Watch this right here. Here, this happens to be the first president of these United States. You do well to wish to learn our arts and ways of life, and above all, the religion of Jesus Christ. These will make you a greater and happier people than you are. We should have listened to George Washington. Happier. But what do we do? God, there's no God. Huh. All Yale, Princeton, all these big fancy colleges, at one time, all their gates where you walked in, all Bible verses, 200 years, 150 years ago, 200 years, you're like, they were all preaching schools. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. And you look at them now, they just been stripping away the Bible verses over the years. And now you look up, no, Bible, no more Bible verses. And not only that. And watch look at now the crop that they're producing and you're like yeah washington dc our capital of our nation it's written in concrete everywhere yeah george washington houses. uh we are zealously performing the duties of good citizens and soldiers we certainly ought not to be inattentive to the higher duties of religion to me to the distinguished character of patriot it should be our highest glory to add the more distinguished character of Christian. Make sure you're a Christian before anything else. First president of the United States, you say, well, the second one, John Adams, what did he say? John Adams, where is he? Uh, suppose a nation in some distant region should take the Bible for their only law book, 
and every member should regulate his conduct by the precepts there exhibited. What a utopia. What a paradise would that region be if people just love God, love their neighbor. He said, think about that world. So what do we do? Uh, the Christian religion is above all the religions that ever prevailed or existed in ancient or modern times. The religion of wisdom, virtue, equity, and humanity. I have examined all religions. This is the second president of the United States. I've examined all religions. And the result is that the Bible is the best book in the world. That's the way they were talking 245 years ago, 250 years ago. That's the way our government officials were talking. All I have to say is, look at us now. Hmm. It's quite different. It's a sad story. Y'all are watching the preliminary collapsing of an empire. You're saying it's imploding. Trying to be good without God, boys. That ain't going to happen. Here comes Karl Marx one more yep. time. Yep. I'm like, yep. when are they going to get off old Karl? They just keep going back to him. One of the ungodliest people on the face of the earth. I'm Rome. going with Jesus and what he did three yep. days later. He died and three days later raised from the dead. Let's see. My sins are removed. Guaranteed I can be raised from the dead. Given power from the Holy Spirit. And all I'm commanded to do is love God and love my neighbor for the life of me. Where What's the downside to that? There ain't no there downside. Ain't no downside. <laughs> well, here's the problem. It makes too much sense. Maybe. <laughs> it much sense. Like so if we, we shall die, see. If we die and they're right, it's just, I guess. We're nothing. in a mess, boys. That's why we need to. But if uh, we die and we're right, somebody got hell to pay. You got it. It, it ain't going to be me. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chase ducks the rest of my life on the earth. Me and old Si keep going until we depart. The Bible calls your physical death as a departure. Your soul and spirit goes to be with God. Your body goes in the cemetery. When Jesus returns, it's the last event. When he returns, he's bringing the body, the soul, and spirits of the ones who have died. There's a resurrection of their bodies, and they'll be given it's a immortal bodies. It's You're a like, gathering. And not only that, Woo! it's a gathering, and the only thing that involved with it, with me, I will have a change of address. Yep. Yep. Change of address, right. boys. It will never be. Okay. I'll get to see it all. I don't all. know whether they're going to be ducks there or not, but I would think they would be. Oh, it will <clears> be. <throat> We're talking about the creator of the cosmos, okay? Well, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be nice to duck on from now on? <laughs> Not and even. no limit. No, run out of bullets. <laughs> Don't run out of bullets. That's right. And no limit. And no game wardens. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, good work here. Work here. We've gone down that road here on this podcast before. Well, Phil, we appreciate having you. And hey, if you're wondering, I, we're going to end with a little Bible reading like we always do. I got one dialed up here that Phil alluded to earlier. But if you're wondering, how do I get to where he's talking about? He he mentioned a few traits that are found in Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the, with Spirit. the Spirit. Jesus, number one. That's it. Right. Right. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. Thank you, Phil. Hey, no problem.